the day that I identify as the day that I started my business, the day that I became an entrepreneur, it wasn't the day that we made our first sale and it wasn't the day that we incorporated our business. It was the day that I wrote my first dream line. And that's what this episode is all about today. In 2007, when Ian and I decided that we were gonna start a business, what we actually did was we got together and we wrote out exactly what we wanted in our lives. Since that time, we've circled back to have a few more of these summits and uh, have realized that they're just as valuable to us now as they were that first day when we decided to be entrepreneurs. So why don't we kick some things off with some random Dave Chappelle samples? Why not? Because it's baller, 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 baller. Good news, boss man. We ranked number one on Google for Tropical MBA podcasts with Dan and Ian. Wow, you're really doing good work these days. Thanks, man. Thanks for that. The premise of the dream line is that if you never allow yourself your dreams, it's really easy to throw those things away. I didn't know that you could write out what you wanted or have your cake and eat it too. Postscript, if you work your tail off for the next five years for it. Yeah, so in 2007, we sat down and we wrote out our dream lines. We're gonna explain how to do that now. Yeah, the craziest thing is that when we look back at these things, we actually accomplished almost everything. Now, you didn't start a mariachi band, but... I didn't start a mariachi band. I <laughs> sent you my 2009 dream line just the other day, and I was nervous when I opened it up because I thought, I, I really hope that I accomplished everything I put on here because I haven't looked at it recently. Uh, obviously, this was 2009, but I wanted to make sure everything was done, and uh, and it was, and it wasn't too embarrassing for me. Incredible. So we're going to do a quick tutorial and walk people through exactly how and why these things work. Plus, at the blog this week, we're going to have examples of how we do it. All right, so first, before we get into the nitty gritty, Ian, hat tip to Tim Ferriss for developing the concept of the dream line, at least in the, in, you know, the way in which we see it. And also to Gerald, let me see, Gorlnick? Gerald G. Gerald G. <laughs> for making a, a great version of it that we've downloaded and we've adapted it for uh, Tropical NBA podcast listeners. All right, so what's the basic format and, and how do these things actually work because it just does seem a little bit cheesy right the basic format is you go in there and you write down exactly what you want to be having what you want to be being and what you want to be doing so examples of having might be you know plane lay it on me i want to have an airplane for example something that I want to have an airplane uh you know I, I think at the beginning my first one in 2007 i wanted to have a laptop yeah, we both had laptops on there. So it kind of depends on the scale in which you're at. Yeah, and being... Plain. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, brother. Can I have the passenger seat? <laughs> uh, being. Being is like, I want to be fluent in uh, Vietnamese language. And that might have a cost associated with it on the dream line. So the idea is the next step to make it happen, that might be committing to tutoring sessions. And that, say, might cost you $400 a month. And that's going to be part of this dream line. The next step is doing. What are the things you want to be doing? Like, uh, do you want to be going on a certain kind of adventure or vacation? Or uh, one of the dream line elements. So I did my dream line last night, Ian. And uh, I had a conference goal on there. I wanted to be going to certain types of conferences and certain types of capacities and certain types of intervals. And that has an expense related to it, of course. Right. And uh, location independent living. Uh, one of the things that we've been talking about lately is uh, the expense of living in hotels. Yes. Right. So that's something to aspire to do is to live in a hotel or, or, on a day to day basis. Yeah. Perhaps. Like what would be your budget for that kind of thing? And, I, you know, I think for us, uh, one of the things doing was we wanted to be working from anywhere. So what are the associated costs with that, uh, having having a mobile office. So basically, here's the idea. Go wild with this stuff. You know, this is the whole idea is one of the biggest questions I get about this is how reachy. Is that a word? Reachy is a word. Yeah, and <laughs> I understand it. So it must be a word. Uh, how reachy should you be on this stuff? This is a conversation we just had actually today about this because uh, we were filling out our dream lines. And the idea, I think, is to is to put down things on your dream line that you don't have a clear path to. Yes. That hasn't been laid out. So I think we challenge each other on these things where if it's a linear path, so it's like, oh yeah, all I gotta do is X, Y, Z, then it's a plan. It's not really a dream. So 
the whole benefit of the Dreamline is that it kind of opens up a space for randomness and chaos to kind of, because we're not, sometimes we're not as in control. That's the magic about these, because when you write down things that at the beginning, it was almost like when I did my first Dreamline, it was almost like, who am I to want this stuff? Right. Do I deserve this stuff? And I think if you're, if you're writing down stuff in that territory, you're in the right place for the Dreamline. Because the whole idea is what you're trying to do is align your micro decisions and those relationships. And, and imagine if after you articulate your deepest desires and your biggest dreams you know, in the next 12 month time frame, imagine how coffee dates are gonna change. Because in the back of your mind, now you might not say anything different, but you're seeing a version of yourself in a completely different way. And I think, hey, I'm not a secret kind of guy or some kind of new age, fumfy, humphy kind of thing, but the universe is a big complex place that we don't understand. So sometimes when you know where you're going, things can start to align with you. All right, Ian, so once you get done with uh, the having, being, and doing portion, there's a spot about next steps and actions. The key idea here is to try to break it down. It's like GTD style. It's like, all right, I want to own an airplane or whatever. Right. What's, what is plane? What does airplane ownership look like? Yeah. I don't understand how to get my license. I don't understand uh, what it takes to keep an up uh, to keep a plane up and running. Yeah. You know, on a monthly basis. Where do I store it? Do I need a pilot? How What's many that? seats do I need? What kind of scarf am I going to buy? I mean, there's all kinds of considerations. I, I think the, the the idea here is like. Look, you might not know how that path is going to fulfill itself, but you got to take the next step out the door. And that's the, the point of that exercise. All right. The third step in this whole thing is expenses. Um, and so along with your dream costs, like, you know, your language studies, your travels, your, your purchases of your automobiles or whatever, then you've got your real expenses. So, you know, how much does your rent cost? And the whole idea here is you want to eliminate things. And we left a comment on our sheet here. You want to eliminate the things that aren't contributing to those goals. That's the idea, right? So it's like this cool um, dichotomy. On the front page, you're looking at all this awesome stuff that your life could be. And then on the back page, it's like car insurance, medical insurance, right. uh, magazine subscriptions. You know, Do you really need Sports Illustrated to come every month? Or yeah, whatever? interesting thing about that. So uh, when you download the document, you'll see exactly what we're talking about. But you've got your monthly overhead, right? Yeah. And I remember the first time I did this sheet, it was massive. I was living in San Diego, <laughs> and I had, like, I had everything on that sheet. I had car insurance. I had, you know, every kind of insurance you could want, you know, fire insurance, slip in the bathtub insurance, whatever. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that was massive. Uh, and recently, over the last couple of years, uh, that list has been getting shorter and shorter in, in terms of my overhead. Right. Because my lifestyle has changed a lot. I, I, I live very minimally now. And that's one of the things that's contributed to, obviously, the decrease in my overhead. Let me give you an example of one of the things I realized when I first did this re- Dreamline and the dichotomy it exposed to me on your being list. You could put in, I would like to be an expat in China for two years. What's the line item cost for that? The air ticket. Yeah. The visa ticket. I mean, literally nothing. And then you flip to the expense side, and here's the dichotomy. All those expenses go down. Yeah. That's the crazy part. So I think that, that like, what I, I think part of what doing the dream line made to me is, like, man, like, all this big money I'm getting from my job isn't getting me my dreams. And this is the other side of the paper. This is a three-sided paper, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> On the third side is, uh, is, your, is your income, right? So it's like, I want to live in China. Uh, so how do I do that? I reduce my monthly costs or my monthly overhead, but then I have to have some kind of asset generation machine that allows me to live in China. Okay, so we're now we're getting on to the fourth point called business visualizations. And this is not something that Tim Ferriss talked about um, because, you know, he was maybe sort of talking about uh, more for something for solopreneurs or I'm not really sure, but this is something that we've always done that's been super useful in our business, which is you'll see it's, it's on the third tab of the spreadsheet and you write down how much income you're currently making, whether it's from your salary, your freelance income or your business. Um, and then what you do is you visualize future cash flows um, and, and what it would take you to get there. And we've often talked about thinking about our warehouse and, you know, stuff like this. And uh, so you say, like, you know, I think that we could launch this new application and I think we could get 50 users at X monthly rate. And that would mean X. And then you kind of look at it. And it's like, well, is that getting me there? Right. And then you kind of look at your organization and you say, 
can my organization support that kind of income? This is a rubric we actually use on the on the product side of our business too. So it's like, hey, we're going to introduce a three hundred dollar product. Uh, we're going to have to sell a hundred thousand of those things for it to be a viable business within our infrastructure. Yeah. Right? What happens when we're selling a hundred thousand a year? Does that mean? Uh, you know, X person picks up the phone for 16 hours a day. Well, that doesn't work. So it's the same thing with these businesses that you're building to kind of support your lifestyle. Like you said, uh, do I need to sell 24 bars? Do I need to sell 150 bars a month? How many bars a month do I need to be able to sit in China and have a good time? So this is sort of like a strategic operating document for your personal life. But what you're doing is you're creating these business and personal avatars, like these aspirational avatars that are up on the top of the mountain. And, and you can look at them and you can walk into every business meeting and being like, I know I want to be the guy that moves 150 bars a month. So you're not going to cut it. So I got to start it. I'm going to have to meet with somebody else after this, right. in other words. So this is this idea of it. You start to, I've always heard this kind of thing. Or I'm going to have to change my product. I'm going to have to introduce a different product. I'm going to have to go to a whole different business model. If I have it in my mind that I want to buy a plane, selling ebooks isn't going to cut it. Yeah. You know, I uh, always have this uh, uh, really bad attitude about the advice. It's like, well, if you want to become rich and wealthy, go out and buy a $2,000 suit and you'll start acting like it. And I just want to look at the guy, the broke guy who's wearing the freaking $2,000 suit and be like, bro, the dream line is available at episode 40. Just download it. Please start with the dream line. <laughs> so, Dan, are you going to read your dream line here on the show today? Right. Uh, no. And uh, it's a good question, actually. Um I'm trying to think. All right, so I did fill it out last night, and the one that I put was, I have a passion for Vietnamese food, and I have, as you know, I have a tutor coming three times a week, two hours a day. 15 minutes, buddy. we got to hurry this up. All right, yeah, so that's one I will share, is that I would like to be able to enter into meaningful conversations with food vendors in the city within the next 12 months. I, I, that's not that reachy, but... I am making an investment in it, and so it, it's worth stating. I think it is, Richie, actually. Uh, it's scary for me. I don't know how to speak Vietnamese. I don't have a clear path to speaking Vietnamese, so I, I absolutely think that's Richie. Maybe you know a little bit more than I do, but wow. Yeah, maybe. I, for me, you're right. It is scary for me, and uh, but I look at other people and I think, you know, it's easy for them, but I don't know. So I, I'm going to go for that, man. So that's one thing I can share. But it's a good question because I don't think you should share your dream lines with people. I don't think you should either. And here's the reason. Whenever you talk about something or whenever I talk about something prematurely, it tends to get screwed up. This right? is the Derek Sivers zip it thing, which is that you feel good about having good goals, right? So we want to warn you. Don't write your dream line and then go tell everybody about your dream line. There's two reasons. One is that you're going to get that a uh, little bit of uh, a good serotonin or whatever feeling like I'm a good person. I've got noble goals, you know, so like right. that'll cut you down. But there's another thing that I think is really important. These dreams should be so ambitious. This is when they're really powerful that people in your life might look at you and be like, who does he think he is? Or Maybe if he becomes that or she becomes that, you know, they're not the person that I know anymore. Right. I think I think part of the problem with being human is that a lot of us are uh, jealous and a lot of us are selfish, too. Yeah. So I think a lot of times when I've shared this with other people, um, it doesn't it just doesn't go so well because people don't think about it in terms of how well that's going to do for you, but what the, how that's going to impact them. So if I have a bunch of ambitious goals that's taken yeah. me away from somebody that I'm close to, uh, is they probably don't want to hear about it. And so really I think good. it's really important, you know, if you keep this kind of stuff to yourself, uh, with some exceptions, I yeah. think you share it uh, with your business partners a lot of time because you have to make sure that you're still on the same trajectory. So yeah. we've shared ours with each other. You share it with... Uh, your partner. Your partner. Yeah. Um, Anybody you call partner, probably. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Unless you're a Wild Wild West cowboy or something. <laughs> but everybody you call partner, you should probably share stuff with. Because look, even if, if it were the case that my dream line was like going in a much different direction from yours, that's a conversation that's really worth having, you know? And these are, the cool thing about this is like, we're, we're not in the game for bottom line profits or for 
shareholder value like me and you are in the game for these dream lines like that's the whole point yeah and so if, if we can't get on the same page about these things then we should figure out where we're going to go and i just want to say one other thing about these dream lines which i think is really important uh and this is just a life philosophy that i have which is you should be evaluating the trajectory of your life on a regular basis and mm. that's what the dream line helps you to do is it helps you to identify where you're going in life. So often in life, I think we say things and then we forget about them because it's really easy, especially if they're hard things to attain. So these are things that you write down and you kind of have to hold your feet to the fire on. Yeah. And I really think that it's worth it uh, for us to spend at least 15 minutes outside of our dream lines, perhaps every week, just to contemplate where we're going. Yeah, and like you said earlier to me, Ian, if you don't decide where you're going in this life, there's a lot of people waiting in line to tell you where to go. Correct. Correct. It's like a game of pinball. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this episode is tropicalmba.com slash dreamlines. You can download all the documentation. And after you finish your dreamline, make sure to go to Google Calendar and remind yourself 12 months later to come back. Because all this stuff is a 12-month time frame, right? We talked a lot about that, like... You know, if you want to buy a Carrera or whatever, you know, that's going to make your target monthly income look pretty gnarly. But that's kind of the point, right? You know, we don't, we're not really thinking in terms of three years. We want to shake things up a little bit. Yeah, we started to do a little bit of modeling with this stuff, Dan, to look, you know, what does it look like to make a major purchase like a plane? Uh, you might not be able to do that in a year, but maybe the idea is to get yourself to a place where you can do that within a year. Well, I have said that, yeah, I agree with that. And I also have put savings goals on my dreamlines in the past. Like I wanted to make, uh, the first one we did, I said I wanted to do max 401k contribution. I just, I, I still think that's important. That's cool, right? It's tax free or whatever toss it in there and and have a little buffer so I, I do think that that kind of stuff's cool yeah I think uh, these sheets aren't perfect by any means but they're a great way to get started yeah and if you guys want to update these things and send them back to us we'd love to work with you on improving this stuff and getting them out to the community all right, Ian, this week, what are you excited about? Uh, facta and expatriatism. Wow, you are just a party, buddy. Yeah. T- <laughs> <laughs> that and uh, SaaS pricing models again. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a fun week, actually, doing some, uh, doing some uh, financial modeling for this new SaaS product that we're coming out with, trying to figure out how that's all going to work. I don't have anything to share there yet, but uh, we will put a couple articles that we've been reading uh, this week up on the blog. Mine is related to the Wall Street Journal and expatriate expatriatism something new we're going to be doing at the blog uh every week thursday morning 8 a.m eastern standard time we're going to be putting up some of our favorite articles from that week so maybe between two and ten articles that really stuck out for us because we do spend a lot of our time reading and and seeing what's out there i'm excited this week about focus at will uh it's uh, something i learned from sean ogle and all those young guys that are doing all this cool stuff like taylor and david telling me about it basically it's Uh, Music, it's sort of like Pandora. It's like a website that plays you music uh, and you can choose your genre, but it's not that interesting. It's sort of like dollared music. And the idea is there's apparently there's science behind it that it doesn't distract you, but it gets you in sort of a trance like so you can do uh, good work. And you're not supposed to play at dinner parties, apparently, even if you like the music, because you're supposed to create like a Pavlonian response in yourself, you know? So like, I hear that really boring song, now I want to work. So this is like TV in the background style. <laughs> Basically. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Hey, Ian, we've got so many iTunes reviews this week, and a lot of them tell great stories about sort of what people are doing in the community. So I wanted to take just a moment uh, uh, to read some of these. Do you have some patience for that yeah while we wait uh amazon banner at the top of the page at the top of the page amazon (laughs) banner go ahead go ahead anything you want to buy just click through click through (laughs) oh that's an insider (laughs) podcast joke uh look jp from canada says warning listening may change your life since listening to the tmba i attended the tmba program last summer launched a new business quit my corporate job move halfway around the world and the business i started last summer just hit a run rate of six figures. And oh yeah, I even started a podcast, which we'll link to on the show notes, tropicalbacom slash dreamlines. Click on the Amazon ad, click on the Amazon ad. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, JP. So there, you've been warned, listening to this may change your life. And as much as I'd love to take credit for JP's success, 
guy's a winner. Yeah, he's too smart to take credit for. Simon Payne, the Payninator, says, This podcast changed my life. You are the best. We look forward to seeing you in Prague at MicroConf, Simon. Yeah, a little insider uh, insider talk here, Dan. I'll be in Prague uh, starting September 15th to October 15th. So if right. you're in Prague, let's meet up. Plane shopping, I suspect. All yes. right, guys. Thanks for joining us this week on the Tropical MBA Podcast. We'll see you next Thursday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for listening to the Tropical MBA podcast. Again, we've got our complete audio archive available at tropicalmba.com. That's the cheapest way to fly business class on your next international flight. Also, every episode has complete notes with links. If you're interested in something we talked about, check out the site. And as always, we'll see you next Thursday morning. Yeah, buddy. <laughs>